Okay, so this is the first of a series of blogs I'm going to do for the project that we've got coming up um, or for the university. I'm going to today look at Paris Angelicus and just have a look at some of the um, techniques that I've used whilst arranging the work for tuba and also having a look at the register of the instrument. So I had a little bit of a warm up and um, went up and down some scales and a little playthrough. So this is as written or as I've arranged it. It's quite high on the octave. And my main concern was that the register that it's playing in, it's close to the upper register, is a little bit aggressive on the sound. And of course the way that it's sound sung, with it being a soft choral piece, it maybe didn't lend itself quite too well. So this was we'll just play through the first section, and this is the written register that we've got. That's a written register. Um, just above the stave, it starts on a top A natural, and it's just a nice warm sound on the instrument. Um, what I was a bit worried was that the first one was maybe a little bit too high, and when it returns the second time with the over voice that this piece has, it would just not sit, it wouldn't be quite as big an impact. That's what it was. But we've had a piano run through, and it seems to sound okay. So the other option would have been to take it down an octave, and it's still would sit in quite a warm register, but the lower notes maybe just lose a little bit of their sound. So this is it written down an octave. There's a few of the notes at the bottom there, um, we'll take them on their own, from round about bar 26. It starts to sound a little bit muddy in the lower register, in the mid register it would be. And it's not quite as lyrical and not quite as tenor voice sounding as what the higher register is. Now the other alternative, that we looked at, was using a mute. I'm going to take this one out. And what this does, it sits in the belt and it cuts out some of the sound and just changes the texture of the instrument. So let's pop the mute in and have a little listen to how it sounds. We'll just play a scale just to give an idea. So, it doesn't quite work as well in the upper register of the instrument because the tone becomes a little bit narrow. It doesn't seem to be captured quite as well up there as in the lower ends.
Croatia of the instrument, which is why I've misplaced a few notes there. And that it sort of constrains a lot of it. It sits in the tail. I don't know how that was shown. It cuts off the wider sound. So some of the notes sound a little bit strained, and it just loses the overall broad tone that the tuba has. So for example, if we go from bar 17, It sounds like it's a little bit strained to me, and that's not how you'd sing this, it's not how a vocalist would produce it. The only benefit of playing with a mute in that register there would be that when we take it out, so we're to finish, I'll play the last four bars of this phrase, take it out and play the next phrase and you'll see the difference, and the impact that that would have. So the next phrase would be more impacting the one that we've just played. So let's have another look I'm doing this down octave with the mutant and I'll play it through and I'll play it to the end and that will just give an, an idea of what it's like to play with the mutant and then what the sound of the instrument is without it. An upper register there is, I think Stravinsky uses it in the Firebird, the instrument muted. But the whole brass section is muted and it gives this kind of da 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 little tight sound. I'll look at it later on in a blog, um, the muted instrument in an orchestra, when we do it later on in this week, and how that little excerpt sounds compared to this kind of thing. And it's more forceful in that excerpt, but this is nice and lyrical nice and moving, the mute just takes away that shine, the sort of vocal quality that the instrument has. Let's have a little listen, now the octave, all the way through this thing, and we'll raise the octave at B, because this would have been the ideal arrangement I think. That could have been how we could have played the arrangement, but I just think the mute takes too much of the instrument and bring it down. The lower register doesn't have the warmth that that upper register has. It doesn't go too high, it goes up to D concert pitch. And it just sounds quite nice, quite lyrical. So we'll play it all the way through this time. Um, there's a few wrong notes in there, 
and noted as we went through, but that's just the pitch of the instruments changed a little bit when the way it feels on the lips. The whole thing is a sort of big column of air, and you can make a note by tapping on the in instrument on the mouthpiece. And when you put a mute on the top of it, it cuts that, it changes that column of air. This is a big, the mute's actually hollow on the inside. So it sort of captures it and extends, alters the air column a little bit. So when you're playing, the pitch feels a little bit different on your lips. Yeah, I've not done an awful lot of mute playing, so um, that's why there's a few little wrong notes in here. But we'll click through now. Um, this is as we're going to do it for the run, the, re the run through on Wednesday night, which will be the final sort of putting it together of all the works. And this is what we've chosen, or I've chosen as the best representation of the tune. Well, it's preserved. The aim of the piece has been preserving the original material as much as possible. And this works just a nice solo voice all the way through. Um, lots of sort of room for expression as a player. Quite a simple accompaniment, and then it's joined it be with a, what was a choir representation, or a choir um, joining in with an echo, a bit of bar later. So you have bar, ah, 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 and the choir comes in at that point with ah, 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 and the two lines interjoin, and it's a nice little sort of canon effect. So this is it, as we're going to do it. This will be the final little bit of playing we'll do today on this. There'll be a few more blogs coming up. I'm looking at different things. The next thing I'm going to look at is the piano um, writing that I've done and what the difficulties there are taking an orchestral transcription and condense it down to piano. The sort of things that you lose doing that. But first of all, let's have a run through of how it's going to sound or how it's going to be played when we get to that stage. Thank mm -hmm. you. 